the walls have started to close in when it comes to Roman Reigns. Because if you are following the SmackDown story, he got beef with Finn Balor, who's now a demon. He got beef with Brock Lesnar. He's probably going to have beef with Seth Rollins soon. And he's most definitely got beef with Big E, who probably wants to do some slapping of meat. So it's got to come to a head at some point. And also, I tell you, you cannot convince me the Raw and SmackDown are written by the same people. SmackDown is such a super duper good show, which especially applies to the latest episode, which came live from Madison Square Garden. So let's find out how good exactly it was by taking the finger of power of this, as well as me, Simon Miller here for What Culture Wrestling, and giving the good bits an up, and the bad bits the down. Powerful video started SmackDown this week because, of course, it is 20 years since the 9-11 terror attacks and there is nothing that I could ever say to try and sum that all up. I mean, it's just as unbelievable now as it was two decades ago. And as a quick another aside, Pac McAfee was back on SmackDown, so I'm very happy to report he is better. As already mentioned, SmackDown was in Madison Square Garden on this evening, so the noise was just absolutely electric. There were people going crazy, especially when the bloodline came out to start the show. People were going bonkers for all of this until Roman got on a microphone and said, wait a minute, wait a minute. He didn't say wait a minute, I'm just saying wait a minute. WWE owns New York, which yes, was probably a shot, but I don't care. And given that I own WWE, this must mean that I owe MSG. Therefore, just like, oh, Roman, you suck. He then lost his temper and was like, acknowledge me, acknowledge me, like he was a 12-year-old kid. All of this was great. To be fair as well, they were acknowledging him. They just think that he's a massive Nimrod. And just when you thought he was going to go in a different direction, all of a sudden, over the big speakers, we heard, dun, 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 and out came Brock Lesnar, looking like the final boss in Tekken, wearing his alternate retire. Everybody once again lost their minds. And I was like, I don't care what they do after this. This is a really good SmackDown. They went toe to toe and I can't deny that it didn't feel like a big deal because it did. Who cares what happened in the past? And then we really turned up the pressure on this cooker because Brock looked at Paul Heyman. They said, hey, Paul, why didn't you tell Roman I was going to be at SummerSlam? Paul was like, I didn't know. He's lying. He's lying. But Roman was like, man, I don't trust you. Give me that belt. Heyman was also begging Brock Lesnar, please just go after any other title. Why are you ruining my life? And they really kind of did. Because then Roman Reigns and the Usos thought, I don't need any of this. This is wasting my day. This is wasting my life. And they left, leaving the Beast and Heyman alone in the ring. You can just imagine Roman's face throughout all of this as well. It was a bit like he'd been cheated on. And then, yeah, Paul Heyman did the old ladies and gentlemen stick. And Brock was like, ha, 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 this is great. But then he stopped and he was like, Brock, please, I'm going to ask you one more time. Why can't you just go after somebody else? So we have got a love triangle here, folks. And as we do know, you don't tell Brock or Lesnar what to do. So he turned, he looked at Heyman, and he got him up in the F5 position before Roman Reigns then returned to the ring and made the save. I was like, ooh, Delali, I don't know what the hell is going on. Amazingly, two Reigns hit two Superman punches, but that was like smacking the wall because it did nothing. And then Brock Lesnar had Roman Reigns in the F5 position, but that's when Jimmy and Jay Uso made a save of their own. But my word, they got rocked with this double clothesline, and I was amazed their heads didn't fall off. This allowed Roman to bail because, of course, he is just a mega asshole, and all of this was top, top stuff. I can't wait to see where this is going to go. And there's a twist in the tail, which we'll talk about later. But the point is, up. We continued this after as well because Paul Heyman was backstage with Roman going, I promise you, I didn't know, I didn't know. Please don't rip out my spleen. And Reigns was like, I will deal with this, but on my time, because now it's a little bit crazy. We then had a really fun 10-man tag. WWE always does this so well. Because it was Big E, Shinsuke Nakamura, Rick Boogs and the Mysterios taking on Sami Zayn, Robert Roode, Dolph Ziggler, Otis and Apollo Crews. And if you can believe it, before we began, Sami Zayn said, oh, hey, I've got a special guest. <laughs> and it was Trey Young. He's an Atlanta Hawks basketball player. So you can just imagine how a New York crowd reacted to that. Once more, I was just sitting there like, WWE, why can't you do more stuff like this more often? I was having a hoot. Fair play to Trey as well, because he totally got this and was clearly having the time of his life. And after some heel beatdown to begin with, eventually Rey Mysterio tagged in. And we always have to remember that Rey Mysterio is on his way to 50 and still performs like he's, I don't know, 14 years old. And when you actually do go through his CV, Rey Mysterio may actually be the best professional wrestler ever. Eventually, the tag team clacks and sounded, ha, which means everybody was allowed to get in and do their big move. And when Trey Young saw that Rey Mysterio was on the ropes, 
he started to choke him. And the boos that rained down, this was absolutely tremendous, especially because the referee then saw Trey and said, sorry, dude, you've got to go to the back. You can imagine the reaction. It was like everyone had won the lottery. Obviously, Sammy couldn't believe this because conspiracy, conspiracy, and he found himself in a little bit of a tiz. He got hit by a double 619. Biggie then hit the big ending. One, two, three. I'm just going to give it a round of applause. Big E had a big tease afterwards as well because he got on the microphone and was like, do not forget I missed the money in the bank and maybe this is the last time you see me on SmackDown because I'll go to Raw and I'll whip Bobby Lashley's ass or maybe I will stay here and I will whip Roman Reigns' ass. And all I need is this. I don't care who it is, but just please let Big E cash in and become the world champion. We've had so much good in 2021 and this would be the perfect cherry hop on top. The contract signing was next. Because of course it was. If WWE doesn't do at least one contract signing a month, they think the world is going to implode. However, it was between Becky Lynch and Bianca Belair, who of course is going to get it up. Now whether it's because we were in New York or because Becky Lynch is smashing it, we can't pretend otherwise. She was booed here and did come across like a bad guy. So look, if I'm incorrect and I'm wrong and it turns out that we can pull this off, Good. That means I'm an idiot. I should be the idiot. It means WWE and Becky Lynch deserve a pat on the back. We have to wait and see. But in terms of this segment, boy, they did not like her. But I was also treated like a hero during this, which made me doubly excited because that should always be the goal. And after Becky Lynch was taking her time to come out there, Bianca was like, would you please get on with this? I am getting bored. And then when Lynch did come out, she was like dressed as if she was transforming into a turkey. That's one way to do it. Becky then realized she was unsure if she should even sign this contract because what would happen if she didn't? And after Belair continued to get more and more frustrated, as did the fans, Lynch was like, look, you all cheered for me when I was away. Why are you treating me like this now? I was like, that's actually a very good point. Lynch then mentioned her newborn at home and that she's come back to these idiotic fans who would rather cheer a flash in a pan over her. And then she signed the deal and she chucked it right in Bianca Belair's face. I was like, man, that is such a dick move. Held the title up before she did leave and once again, the boos were there. So look, I am well intrigued and well interested to see what's gonna happen now because sometimes you go to one city, they do react how you want them to react and then just by magic, the next city copies and does the same. So we shall have to wait and see. Shotzi and Knox then offered Paul Heyman a ride on their tank. And that was a little bit weird. And if you do do some digging, it certainly sounds like we were meant to do these two taking on Carmella and Zelina Vega, but it got cut due to time issues. And that absolutely sucks. But in the world of kayfabe, shouldn't Shotzi and Knox have heard that and gone to management and gone, uh, no, we don't want to do that. Where's our title match against Natalia? And there's nobody meaner than Tamina. I mean, we've been waiting weeks. It did allow more time with Heyman, though, who said Roman Reigns' priority right now is to watch his cousins retain their tag team championships in tonight's main event. And that's when Big E arrived, and he did that thing he has been doing when he holds up the briefcase into Paul's face and just goes, rah, 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 and makes all these noises. I don't know why I'm entertained by this, but you bet your ass I am. And then WWE went WWE. Maybe I misheard because I am a stupid idiot, but I swear they said that on Raw, we are doing Bobby Lashley versus Randy Orton for the WWE title. So what a nuts build that was. On one Monday, Randy went, yo, Bob, geese title match. And one week later, Bob went, yo, cool, here's title match. See what I mean about Raw and SmackDown? It doesn't make any sense. Edge versus Seth Rollins was next. And this was flubbing brilliant. Brilliant, I tell you. It was so good, I don't even care it was a rematch. And if WWE wants to rematch it for the next 10,842 years, I will be here for it to the point it doesn't just get an up. Ow. It gets a golden up. It didn't hurt that Edge was given a mega reaction. And do not forget that before this year's WrestleMania, there were some mumberings that people backstage were like, oh man, I don't know what to do with Edge. He may get booed against Roman Reigns. And I'm sorry, if you came up with that, you're probably the type of person that thinks Adam Cole would be better as a manager. Rather than attack his neck this time, Rollins was going after Edge's arm. So that was a little bit different, but they still found so much time in between all that to go crazy cray. Because Edge went for an apron spear, but he missed that and got kneed in the head. Then he's been chucked into the barricade and then Seth even went for a glam slam and sure did that go exactly as it was meant to be planned no but do not focus on the little foibles where everything else is just the greatest thing ever we were then escaping DDTs and pedigrees and Edge even hit a pedigree for a crazy near fall and after that didn't work he did a crossbody from the top onto the floor Edge, almost 50 year old Edge, like, man, I don't care. Wrestlers are absolutely nuts. They were then back into hit, move, reverse, hit, move, reverse, and somehow Edge even turned a curb stop into a power bomb. And then Seth 
gave the rated R superstar a buckle bomb. And I turned into Daddy Simon then, which I should never describe myself as. So I was like, no, Edge, he's got a bad neck. We shouldn't be giving him buckle bombs. But these two knew they were in Madison Square Garden and they wanted to give us everything they had. And boy, howdy did they. And it's a little bit of a shame this had to end in shenanigans, but when something is this good, who even cares? I couldn't give an absolute crap. But when the referee was a bit like, oh, I don't know what's going on, Seth Rollins smashed Edge right in the balls, and that's when some bad things were about to happen. Because of course, Edge was like, oh no, my testicle region, my groin. So Seth smashed him in the head over and over and over again with super kicks and who knows what else. And then he curb stomped him. That did lead to the win, but it was a bit like, wait a minute, Adam Copeland, the man behind Edge, he does have a bad neck. What the hell have you done? And this was the story as well, because Edge wasn't moving and we had to get an ambulance crew, excuse me, a medical facility crew out there, and we had to take him away in a medical facility wagon. So this is probably writing Edge off TV for a while, but because you had most of the roster going, oh no, I cannot believe it. It had the real emotional impact that you needed. And we had an interview with Seth who was like, man, I don't know what I feel about this. Maybe I don't feel anything at all. So that dude has completely fallen off the cliff. Edge was also going, oh, Beth Phoenix, Beth Phoenix, as he was being loaded in. And this truly was WWE at its best. Maybe not that nut shot, but again, I can just ignore that. It really was a 10 out of 10. Roman was then back and he still ain't happy. He was basically lecturing the Usos going, look, if you lose to the Street Profits in a minute, I'm going to rip your heart out and eat it for dinner. Before he turned to Paul Heyman and was like, Paul, why didn't you tell me about Brock, man? And Paul was still insistent, I didn't know. And the most important part about all of this, and we did talk about it earlier, is that when Brock Lesnar could have f 5 Paul Heyman, he did not. This is a little bit like when you're watching a TV show and you hear a gunshot, but you don't see a dead body. So it looked like Roman Reigns saved Paul Heyman, but did he, or was it all part of the plan? And you see, this is why it's so damn good. We were then into our main event and the Street Profits had a flapping great match with the Usos. And if it wasn't for a stupid WWE ending, I'd probably be doing a backflip right now. But we did have one of those, so no backflip. However, up. I also want to talk about Montez Ford because I'm pretty sure he's illegal. He did this dive over the top rope where he got so much air, there is no way that flight traffic control or air traffic control would allow a human being to do this. It just doesn't make any sense. It is like two plus two equals potato. At this stage, Heyman and Roman made their way to the ring. So they're like, damn it, there's no way I'm going to allow them to lose. And I think Montez Ford was hitting super kicks so hard he lost the shoe. And that was massively entertaining because the crowd were like, oh man, let's chant for the shoe. And now I want the shoe to be pushed to become world champion. I'm just that easy. Sadly though, when Montez finally did get his frog splash, looking like they were going to win the tag team championships, Roman Reigns ran the win. He beat everybody up. And of course, it meant it ended in a disqualification. And while I get it, I just didn't need it. In fact, I would have rather that Roman still caused the distraction, but the referee didn't see it just because we could have then got a one, two, three. Especially as I have evidence for this. Bring down the board, it goes up to 53. 53 disqualifications. And I would just said it, but to make it clear, it is getting it down. This did all tie into Roman's mood though, because when he was done, he got a microphone again. He said, look, I ain't waiting around. Here's my answer to Brock Lesnar's challenge. I'm gonna smash him, just like I'm gonna smash Finn Balor at Extreme Rules. And I was like, Roman, no, you just made the cardinal sin. You're a professional wrestler. You don't mention another professional wrestler's name because as soon as he did, the lights went out. The fans went nuts because you could tell what was going to happen and then we got the heartbeat and we got Finn Balor's music and that's right, the Irishman returned as the demon. And I know, I get it, I hear you. Why don't we only build this for one week? You're right, we could have done it over a month, but again, pick your battles. This was a tremendous ending. Everyone was like, oh my God, is the demon Finn Balor. I think the character's really cool, so much so I'm giving it an up. It was also hilarious because Roman Reigns was trying to stay in character while also having the eyes of, oh my gosh, this guy's gone crazy. He's gonna try and kill me. And just to wrap it up in a nice little package, this week's SmackDown was brilliant. And whoever is writing Raw right now, just rip this off. I tell you, it will be a much better show. So overall, the Delur is getting it up. Now, please do leave a comment below and let us know what you thought about last night's episode of SmackDown. Like the video, share the video, and subscribe. Head on over to whatculture.com where you can keep up to date with all the wrestling news. Make sure you come say hello on social media. And there's loads of ups and downs. Watch every single one. My name is Simon for Culture. Thank you for tuning in as always. And I will see you on the next one.